Boom. Longhorns land John Mills, offensive lineman out of San Francisco, California, Jerry, St. Ignatius. Uh, I tell you what, Kyle Flood reaching out west uh, for a commitment. This one from John Mills. Uh, tell us a little bit about John. Yeah, John, first off, the recruitment, it's different because – um, you know, Jaden Chapman was a Nash, more of a national recruit, I think, coming out of uh, Texas. But it feels so similar to me and has for a while. Uh, that Kyle Flood was in on John Mills early, uh, maybe after Washington, where he had four family members play, which it came down to Texas, Washington with Florida being a distant third there. Uh, but, uh, you know, it felt so similar because Kyle Flood got in on Jaden Chapman early, which means he got him on campus uh, more than any other school outside of the University of Washington, obviously. Uh, but he got him on campus uh, a handful of times throughout this process prior to his commitment. That's a lot for a kid from San Francisco uh, to get the taxes. Uh, and, and now, obviously, family has the means to get down on the official visits. But still, that's a long flight. That's not easy travel. Uh, and that that he got Kyle Flood got him on campus that much. It felt so similar to Jaden Chapman the whole way. Despite the competition, you felt like the relationship was really strong and that Kyle Flood had a very good read on that recruitment. And uh, John Mills, the player, you know, 6'5 and a half, 6'6, 325. He's that swing player. He could play right tackle, he could play guard. Um, and I do think he's one of those guys. I think he has the capability to do that. Uh, but he is a tough kid, physical kid, super intelligent kid. We've had him on the show before. One of the things he said on that interview, Bobby, that's always stuck with me, is I, I, I have a feeling I want to play football in the South. I mean, that so that was bad news for Washington as soon as he said that, right? And then he makes official visits to Florida and unofficial visit to Florida. Uh, so that he kind of backed that up with visiting two schools in the South multiple times. Uh, but uh, John Mills is a uh, – prospect that Kyle Flood has had circled for a long time, well over a year. Um, and when Kyle Flood does that, he generally wins those recruitments. There aren't many of those he loses when he gets a kid on campus that much and he has a kid identified that early. I, I tell you what, the size of these offensive linemen, yeah. uh, I want to talk about that in a second, but tell us a little bit about John Mills as a player. What are his strengths? What does he need to work on? That sort of thing, Jerry. Yeah, so I think his strengths are he's he's intelligent. One, he can play in a fast paced game. Uh, two, I think he's he's got he's a physical kid. He likes to finish guys on the ground, right? He's not he is a play through the whistle player. Um, so I, I think a lot of people think private school kid from San Francisco, hey, over in California. No, he's a physical football player. He has a physical mentality, and he likes to beat people up physically. Uh, so I think that is a strength of his. He's got 80-plus inch wingspan. He's got 10-plus inch hands. I think he's got enough body quickness, reactive quickness, foot quickness to play right tackle. I do think he has tackle skills. Now, whether he's a tackle or whether he's a guard, that will all play out in time. Uh, but I do think he's a guy that could play some right tackle because of that body quickness, foot quickness, and reactive quickness. I think obviously what you have to work on uh, with uh, for John is, you know, look, it's continuing to just kind of get stronger. He he is not a kid that really has to do a lot of body reshaping, but he can just get stronger. I think he's got good natural strength on contact, but then that ability to strengthen those legs and hips and really drive through the level of players that he's going to be playing against in the SEC, the size of those defensive linemen. And then obviously uh, balance and pass set is something I think young offensive linemen are always working on is maintaining balance when somebody gives you an, an outside-in move, uh, making sure you're balanced in your pass set and you don't get leaning on a heel one way or the other. I, I think those are a couple of areas for John. And, and I think this, um, he's going to maximize his talent. So whatever he can get out of his uh, frame and out of his game, he's going to do it. I, I, I go back to when, when we had that interview with him, I go back to the fact that all of his relatives are athletes, essentially. Yeah. I mean, there's it's like – there are fewer that aren't athletes than are, right? <laughs> and at a very, fairly high level, too. Yes. So uh, it runs in the genes a little bit for him. I think it's interesting you talk about the guard versus tackle piece. Uh, with Kyle Flood and, and what he's turned the offensive line into, there are a lot of those guys that are guard tackles. And you mention it, you find out once you get them on cap campus which one they're really better at, and then you plug and play. You don't try to make that predetermined right. because if you do, then one guy may be a half step slower than another guy. And then the, the guy here, here's my point. 
you want guys that can be pro football players at yeah. whatever position they're going to play. And so if he's a tackle guard, you'll find out whether he's an NFL tackle or an NFL guard, and that's the position he'll play most likely at Texas. Uh, it's a it's a very unique situation that Texas has garnered here because I'm going to give you this t- this total right now. Texas now has four offensive line commitments, Jerry. Six five or six six three twenty three twenty five with John Mills, Jordan Coleman six five three fifty, uh, Jackson Christian six five three zero nine, a uh, Devin Coleman six four three forty. I got news for you: the average weight on a commitment and height uh, for Texas right now six five three hundred thirty pounds. So if you're that big, you don't know whether you're going to play guard or tackle. I mean, right. it's just it's just part of the 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 whole nuance of it all. And I think that the uh, Kyle Flood doing a, a just a, you know, of all the coaches, we talk about Tashard Choice uh, and what he's done at running back. I mean, just fantastic, right? Uh, Jeff Banks done a great job in the DFW area. Kyle Flood has just totally reshaped the offensive line in a way that, frankly, I mean, Jerry, it, when we started, uh, when, when, when the new regime came in with Steve Sarkeesian, Kyle Flood, Jeff Banks, that group, we all thought, what's the best they could do at offensive line quickly? And frankly, they've exceeded that. Yep. I mean, they've they've reshaped that offensive line in such a way that it's a team strength heading into this year. And I think that with adding guys like John Mills, I mean, you're, it's going to be a team strength going forward. Yeah, you know, I, I totally agree, Bobby. I think the thing is, too, is they've built quickly. Not quickly, right? It's a three-year process. But they've built an SEC offensive line in terms of starting size and depth in your program. I think that's the key is the depth of size of the individuals in the program because injuries will happen. Um, and, and we're going to a longer season, right? Now you do get two off weeks, but you're going to a longer season with the college football playoff. Texas obviously hopes they're in it uh, on an annual basis. Uh, but it, that depth is never going to be more important uh, than it is moving forward for for teams and programs and the Blue Blood programs. I really believe that in these power conferences, especially the Big Ten and SEC. Uh, but I think Kyle Flood's done a great job uh, of identifying guys, staying on guys that all have that pre pre uh, requisite size. Uh, but Bobby, what you pointed out earlier about who can play right tackle, who can play guard, I think is so such a good point because. Here's what I always say, and that's always say, could play right tackle, could play guard. Because the high school huddle tape shows you one thing. But going up against Trey Moore, Colin Simmons, and practice shows you something else. I mean, that's the key there, right? We think these guys um, can play some right tackle. um, But here's the the thing. When those NFL-level edge rushers, which you may play against one in high school, but when those guys are coming at you play after play, your peripheral starts getting tested. And if you're not quick to react to that, you can't play tackle. And that can only truly, and that's why the coaches around the country recruit these guys as swing players, right tackles or guard. They don't know 100%. They have a good idea, but until you get in the arena on a play-to-play basis in practice or in the games at that level, you don't truly know. Um, so I think that's a great point you made. And, and I want to say this, too, about some of these guys, Bobby. Evan Neal with, started out at guard and kicked out the tackle. You go way back to Lael Collins at LSU, started out at guard and kicked out the tackle. So some of these guys, just because you're labeled a tackle, if they start their career at guard, that doesn't mean they can't end up at tackle because we've seen some really, really good offensive linemen kind of get their feet wet in college at guard, then kick out the tackle as they get more experience. So I think we sometimes, I think we do it, the fans do it, try to pigeonhole these guys. I think you kind of have to let that developmental process take place. Jerry, going back to, to John Mills a little bit, the, yeah. you think he's a culture fit at Texas? Like, is oh, he a, yeah. okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I, about I, him I, as a person that you, yeah, I think that's a great question, Bobby, and that's one I don't have any hesitation on. Look, he is a guy that, um, I, you know, I think he is a talent maximizer. I think he is big on his development. I think he checks all those boxes. This is not a highly ranked guy that thinks he's coming in, I'm going to be here three years, and I'm out. I, I don't think that's his mindset. I think his mindset is to come into a program that he sees a great fit at, take his development very seriously, 
develop over time, and hopefully he has an NFL career. I think he's attacking this in the way Steve Sarkeesian wants 70 uh, of his scholarship athletes to attack the process. Because yeah, there's going to be 15 that are three and out uh, in the program. No question. Yeah, yeah, and I get that. I think we all get that. I, off, the reason I ask about culture is because offensive line is one of those developmental positions. Yes. I mean, it, it's – Kelvin Banks is the rare human that comes in as a true freshman, starts throughout – and I'm not sure he would have started throughout had he gone into a program like Texas today. Right. right? I mean, that, that's just the reality of it because they actually have some upperclassmen that are that are uh, performing uh, compared to where they were just three short years ago. And, Bobby, to your point on if John Mills is that guy, he's hosted by Daniel Cruz. So that's two like-minded individuals that, uh, that uh, Kyle Flood linked up on that official visit to have Daniel Cruz Host John Mills, by the way, it says a lot about Daniel Cruz. He's only been on campus a few months, and he's hosting official visitors. Um, that tells you they're two very like-minded guys. Yeah, well, I think I think that uh, that's what you want. Uh, again, uh, I guess uh, as we close out here, I, I just go back to this, this fact. Four offensive line commitments now for the Longhorns. Average height and weight, six foot five, 330 pounds. That's – that's a, you know, hashtag big humans for Kyle yes. Flood. Uh, there's no doubt about that. They've got more that they're trying to get uh, going right now uh, at tackle in particular. Oh, yeah. Uh, yep. yeah. One of the Nick largest Brooks. humans, one of the largest humans, Bobby Nick Brooks. I mean, Bobby, when he walked by CJ and I at the airport, six, seven, legitimate. If you took his shoes off, said, we're measuring you up against the wall here at Bergstrom Airport, uh, Air, airport six, seven without shoes. 355, 360, I don't even know. All right, congratulations to John Mills. we got one more thing we want to do. Rod Babers uh, broke down some film specifically of John Mills. Uh, but before we get to that, again, 65330 is the average of the Texas offensive lineman commitments. Jerry, thanks for your time today. Uh, and John Mills from us over here at On Texas Football, hook him. Hey, what's up, folks? Uh, welcome back to Owen Texas Football. I'm Lifetime Longhorn Rod Davis here to give you another eval. This time we're talking about John Mills, the uh, offensive tackle. Uh, if you're talking about size and big humans, it's another one. Uh, he's 6'6", 320. The thing that jumps out, he's actually agile. <laughs> and I know, usually we're talking about guys who are 6'6", 320. Ag agility is not one of the terms you're using to describe their skill set. He is surprisingly agile for a guy his size. Can do damage at the second level when he gets there, too. Uh, uh, but, yeah, look at him. Look at him move, man. He actually said hey, the first thing that jumps out, you're like, hey, guys that big aren't supposed to move like that. So surprisingly athletic for a guy his size. I think that's what uh, Sark and Kyle Flood may love about this young man. Yes, he's got the size of the raw materials, but look at the athleticism that jumps out. He's able to stonewall edge defenders uh, really well, too. I mean, uh, there are a couple of times where he just basically stops those guys dead in their tracks uh, coming off the edge. Um, he also does a great job of uh, being able to the, the, some of the pin uh, and pull concepts, does a great job of blocking down. Uh, you see him in a screen game here, uh, getting downfield. And I think that's where his strength actually is. When he gets downfield on the second level, then the surprising athleticism for a big man seems to shine through there uh, for, <laughs> for John Mills. Also something I wrote down, he delivers a blow. He works to deliver a blow. Uh, he really does. And once again, when you see him downfield making plays, but he works to deliver a blow, not to absorb one. A lot of our old linemen, you'll see him absorb just because it's, you know, it's something that they can do still and then wrestle with the defensive lineman and then maul them. No, this guy actually uses his hands, delivers a blow. I like that about his game. Um, just moves really well for someone with that frame. And he's still extremely raw. But he still really he moves really well for a guy that frame. Finishing a block, you see it right there. Got a little nasty to him. You want your old lineman to have a little bit of nasty. I want to have a little attitude out there, a little mean streak. He's got just enough out there, uh, but there's no doubt. The one thing that stands out for him, you got the frame, um, but look at the ability to move with that body, uh, with that frame, with that body type. Uh, guys, you just don't see that. That makes him ideal for zone blocking schemes. Texas runs a lot of inside, inside zone, outside zone. That's pretty much part of their bread and butter run plays. He would be ideal in those, those uh, fits as well in those types of run sets. Also, 
Um, he has the ab ability, I think, to add some power, the potential to add some power to his game. I don't know necessarily if, you know, he has a lot of power. He does a great job of kind of mauling these guys in front of him. But you add some power to that frame with that athleticism. I mean, like I said, look at his footwork and the way he moves. I just think that's just kind of natural for him as an athlete. When he gets in space, he doesn't look uncomfortable. Look at him here. <laughs> when he gets in space out there, some some linemen, they, they, they look out of sorts. They look like, hey, a fish out of water. Not him. And I think that's due to his athleticism, which you really just don't see guys move that well with that kind of frame. Um, he doesn't quit on plays, too. I love that about him. That's, some, that's part of football character. He, just, he doesn't quit on plays. You can see him uh, to the echo of the whistle, finishing blocks off, finishing blocks with a bit of an attitude as well. Um, that's something I think, you know, that's for offensive linemen. That's something personal to be able to finish your work and to be able to do it with a certain type of pride. So he's got the, the blue-collar attitude and uh, work ethic you need for an offensive lineman. But I think the the most I think the most positive sign about the upside for this young man is that he's he's 6'6, 320. Um, but the athleticism and the ability to move at that weight uh, really sets him apart from his peers. And I think you can add some power to that. You add some power to that. Then you're talking about a guy who has just the tremendous upside. You're talking about a guy that's got power five starting caliber upside if he's a guy that can add that type of power to his frame. So uh, that's my overall eval of John Mills, the offensive tackle. Uh, big human, but like I said, really like a lot about his overall athleticism. Usually I don't talk about that that much when we talk about a big man, but for him, it's special.